What's up guys, Retro Django here, back with another Commodore 128D model video. This is the latest donation that I have got on this YouTube channel. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. But before we do anything, before we give it power, I don't know if it works. This one hasn't been connected for many, many, many years. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble everything and make sure that, that everything is okay inside the PCB board and then give it some power. <clears throat> All right, guys. We have opened the 128D. It hasn't been opened for 20 years or 30 years. I don't know, you can see the dust. Now it's a standard 128D board here. We have the built-in PSU here. We have the floppy drive built-in here. And we have got the controller for the floppy drive over here. And as you can see, these chips, the 6526 CIA chip is from 21st week of 1986 the 6502 so the floppy drives had their own computer system boards built in that's why a 1541 uh, floppy drive did cost the same amount as a commodore 64 it was crazy back then so as you can see i removed the uh, controller board for the floppy that's because i had to can you see it over here yes you can i had to remove this because i have no idea of the condition of the old psu that you can see over here so what we're going to do we're going to do the boom test i'm just going to turn it on now after 30 years Okay, the fan is working. We're not giving the board any power. We're, and, and this one will give power to the floppy drive. That's off also. So, as of right now, it should be more or less pretty safe to turn this one on. I'm just gonna, I wanna make sure the 12 volt is perfect, but the 5 volt, it's really important that it's 5 and not 7. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to give this one some ground on the black over here and the red one should be fire bolt. So let's see uh, what it says. Five, that, that's just perfect, 5.076. So 5.0, that's just incredible. I'm happy with that. And the 12 volts over here should be, yeah, 12.9 man this psu no recap no nothing it's just incredible i'm not worried to give this one some uh, some power now let's go ahead and do so <laughs> yes okay everything is reassembled and ready to be turned on three to one don't blow up. We have a picture. The drive is running. The keyboard is working. How cool is this? Let's put on my um, 1541 Ultimate and check it out. All right, we're, yes. We're testing with the 1541 Ultimate inserted and it boots up in Commodore 64 mode. Let's go into one file demos and let's go down to Druid. Yeah, and let's run that. And if you like to tinker around with stuff like this, if you like stuff like this, visit PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com offers a wide range of services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and amazing PCB production. You can let PCBWay build your projects as a do-it-yourself solution or just a complete build solution. Check out the description down below for much, much more info. The cool thing about PCBWay is you can send in your projects or you can check out 
all the different projects for retro computing, retro PCs, Commodore 64, because they have got so much stuff in there already ready to go. So go in and check out PCBWay.com. Fully, fully recommended. I love that company. Okay, so the, the uh, <laughs> Commodore 128 do turn on. That's beautiful. I inserted my favorite turbo cart. That's called KCS Turbo Cartridge from 1985. And we're gonna take one floppy drive here. Now this Commodore 128 is a donation by Klaus. I love you, brother. And this is Armalite. And let's go up and say load. Now I haven't cleaned the drive yet. I haven't done nothing. We will make another video showing how to disassemble everything and, and clean and make it super nice. But I will do that when it's summer. I will uh, retro bright it out in the sun. I, I don't use chemicals and stuff like that. Now, let me talk a bit about the Commodore 128D. Oh, was that it? I think something's wrong because that was a few seconds, guys. Okay. Let, just give me a second for uh, talking about the... Co that was fast! <laughs> uh, space. Alright. So that's cool. I haven't done nothing with it. <laughs> Just check the power, and that was about it. Now, do I like the Commodore 128D? Uh, <laughs> back in 2018, when I started my YouTube channel, I was all into these big box Commodores. The 64, the 128, the Amiga, Amiga 2000, 3000, 4000, big box was just the S for me, I wanted to have them, I never had them as a kid, but today, do I like the Commodore 128, do I use it, no, because everything that this one has, I mean, you can have a Commodore 64 that takes this much space on your disc, and have the 1541 Ultimate built in there at the back side, and you have everything built in, so, no, uh, I'm not into stuff like this. You can have an Amiga 4000, you can have its keyboard, but everything is built in an Amiga 1200. So I prefer the desktop models, but we're all different. I prefer the desktop ones. I don't have that much storage here. They are much, much cheaper and they do everything that, that they have to do. I know the 128D, this one is the plastic version. You can have the metal version also. Go in and write Retro Django, Commodore 128D, check out my videos, I have disassembled the metal version, the metal version is my favorite, the fan is not included on that one, I love the metal, metal version, not the plastic one, it doesn't have the handle but who cares, It can. It, the metal version can't have the keyboard connected down under but who cares. And my personal opinion, the 128D, it was, I mean, it had so much stuff. It had the 80 column that no one cared about. It could read MS-DOS uh, PC disks no one cared about. It had, what was it, Z80 CPU that no one cared about. So it had a lot of stuff that very, very few software companies developed for. They did whatever all the others did. Let's make the games for Commodore 64. They didn't really use the 80 column. They didn't use the 128K RAM. This one could be upgraded to 512 kilobytes of RAM, but no software came out to it. So it was, it was, um, it was a mess. <laughs> I mean, the idea was cool, but no, no one utilized it. It's all about money, availability, just like they kept on producing games for the, you know, Amiga 500 one megabyte solution. And it is what it is, guys. <laughs> Same thing happened for this one. So the 128D, three processors, why? I mean, there's so much why in this computer, but at the end of the day this is my personal thoughts what do i really think about the commodore 128b 
uh, not about the history of what, ha what happened and stuff like that. What I really think about it, I think it's such a cool computer. Now this is my personal opinion. I think it's so cool. I love that this drive is built in and I think, I mean, it's such a nice design. It reminds me of the Amiga 1000 and... Uh, Man, these Commodore 64 games, the sprites can just disappear. When you hit the targets, it doesn't... You can see, they just hit my ship and nothing happened. And uh, It is what it is, guys. It's an old 8-bit system from the 80s, but still so much nostalgic love. I, I, I really, really love this. Really cool. So, last thing we have to test is the SID chip. Of course, you can hear the sounds here, but let's go ahead and, and check out which, which version that's built in. Bam! Yes! Alright! So, let's just go in and choose music. And... Uh, Go down here and see if it's the 6581 or the 5550. Great stuff. Now, I have a lot of issues with all my 1541 Ultimates on my Commodore 128s, but But never any issues with the 1541 Ultimate with my Commodore 64s. But all my 128s and all my different plus, non plus, two, whatever. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> Almost. Play. No. I don't know why, man. And I asked and I asked about this on a Facebook group, and everybody said, "No, I never had issue with the 128." Oh, but my D model in plastic, my D model in metal, my discharge model 128. I have also filmed three years back. Oh, it almost worked. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. Let me just clean the cartridge and try again. Come on. Come on. Yes. Guys, I have cleaned, 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 cleaned. All my other cartridges works perfect. Okay. And this is... Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. I will, I will actually put this video on the 1541 Ultimate Facebook group. I love that group. I love the 1541 Ultimate. It's the best. Yeah. All my other cartridges work, but... And it's just when I combine it with any of my Commodore 128s. D, non D. Okay, let's just speed up. Go and play some music. Oh, hurry, hurry. Come on. Yes, it's the 6581 SID chip built in here. I'm so happy. So, <laughs> we should just do a turbo power on and everything just works. How cool is this? Can I just go out and just hope that everything works? It's very flaky with the 128, I don't know why, but let's end this video by listening to this song. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Yeah, have a great day out there. Bye.